sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, steward in charge, Robin Smith, timekeeper, John Smith. Our three judges assigned, all from England, will be Steve Gray, John Latham, and Bob Williams. Our referee in charge will be Lee Every of England. Introducing to you first, fighting tonight out of the blue corner, he comes to the ring wearing black, gray, and white, and weighed in officially at 299.4 pounds. A native of the Democratic Republic of Congo, he is now fighting out of Airdrie, Scotland, and brings a professional record consisting of 19 wins, just one defeat. 14 of his 19 wins come by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Martin Bacoli. And his opponent across the ring fighting tonight out of the red corner. He comes to the ring wearing white with black and red and weighed in at 257.1 pounds. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, by way of his native country of Cameroon. He has a professional record consisting of 40 wins, 7 defeats, 1 draw, with 28 of his 40 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Carlos Tocan! Okay, okay lads, lads, when I, I say, say stop, stop, you stop, stop boxing. boxing. When, when I, I say, say break, break, take, take steps step back. back. Keep, Keep your hands up, up. Protect, protect yourself full time. time. Good, Good luck to you both. Good, Good luck. luck. So all heavyweight action from here on. As we get underway with Carlos Takam against Martin Bacoli. Two men who've made their way to Europe from different parts of Africa. Takam fighting once for a world title back in 2017 against Anthony Joshua. Bacoli, the younger man at 30, 12 years younger, hoping to tread a similar path. I think the first thing that is evident here, Mike, is the size of Bacoli. Absolutely huge. He really is. On the front foot, Takam trying to hold it also. He likes to be the neighbor man, likes to take a back step. That's what's so exciting about this matchup. Both trying to establish their jab early on. Yeah, Bacoli coming in at 299 pounds, 21 stone, five pounds. His heaviest ever in nine and a half years as a professional his trainer billy nelson convinced that he is one of the most avoided heavyweights on the international team that's oh, a lovely right hand from bacoli he's working well he's measuring takam behind that lead hand of his you see is the, the variation of the shot as well it's not just the jab it's a long arcing hook as well and that sets up the right hand just missing with the target there Bacoli making his intentions clear in the early stages with two solid right hands. One landed flush, the other just grazing the chin of Takam at 42, who revived his career earlier this year with a surprise win against the Olympic champion from 2016, Tony Yoka, the Frenchman in Paris. Yeah, it's a very positive start, this from Bacoli. He looks comfortable, he looks relaxed, composed. He's not rushing anything. As the fight goes along, he likes to really go through the gears, Bacoli, but doing the right thing here. As is Takam, to be fair, he's tucking up, he's moving his feet, he's not taking unnecessary risks. No need early on, especially against a man who is as big and as heavy as Bacoli. Needs to start jabbing that body of Bacoli, Takam. No point head hunting right now. Just faint, move the head, stab that jab to the body. Then you can start looking for the right hand over the top. Better variation with that lead hand from Bacoli. 
Like I say, it's a very comfortable start for Bacoli. Good start by Martin Bacoli, but Carlos Takam apparently unfussed in the corner in between rounds. This scheduled to go 10. And that win for Takam against Tony Yoka in Paris earlier this year, suggesting that even at 42, he's not yet ready to fill the role of making up the numbers. No, he always brings it, Mike, every single time he fights. And I was calling for that jab to the body from Takam. And right at the end of the first round, he threw the jab and it landed nicely to the midriff of Bacoli. So I'd like to see that jab pop out a bit more from Takam because he will find the right hand after. But again, Bacoli looking very relaxed, very composed. He's patient. We have seen him land that right hand a couple of times, but he's not going gun ho with the shot, just missing there. Takam bringing his feet nicely out of range. Yeah, Takam wise to that shot that landed a couple of times in the opening round from Bacoli. He's always moving his head side to side, Takam. He's going to have to keep doing that. We've already seen, like we said, that right hand finding the target a couple of times from Bacoli, so he can't afford to be a static target. Hands have to be high, he has to keep that head moving side to side. There you see, and you be able to look for the counters after. I don't think it would be long, Mike, so we see Bacoli going through the gears. But having said that, carrying a lot of excess weight. So will he be a little worried or concerned as to go through the gears as fatiguing later? But still, holding centre ring, poking out that jab. Yeah, there were one or two rumours that Bacoli had actually pulled out of this contest. Don't really know about the substance and the foundation beneath those rumours, but here he is tonight, and he did weigh in at his heaviest ever, as I said earlier. But attempting to take control in the early stages here against the veteran Carlos Takam. Yeah, look, there's definitely question marks there, Mike, for sure. Oh, Takam, I think he landed the right hand there. If he didn't, it was very close. Bacoli's back was to me, but that's what he needs to do. He's trying to time that right hand. That was better, and I was just going to say, you know, there, there may be concerns because, you know, you look back at Bacoli's win against Tony Yoka, it's arguably his best win, and he's 25 pounds light, lighter, so not too sure why he, he wants to weigh so heavy. But some good work from Takam. Back comes Bacoli. He's heating up nicely this contest. Takam gets through again with a right hand. Successful promoters in the history of the sport. Frank Warren on the left, Bob Aram still going strong. And Warren and Aram describing tonight as a game changer. Referee Lee Everett warning the two men about the closeness of the heads at the beginning of this third round. Yeah, just sat behind him, Mike, was the great Roberto Duran. The who's who are here in attendance, and this is what. I was expecting to see from Bacoli as the rounds go on, him really go through the gears, landing big shots, he's doing well taking these Takam. The first real sustained attack from Martin Bacoli. Big right hand lands high on the head of Takam, but Takam fires back in the only way he knows how. And suddenly the fight has come to life in the third round. <laughs> Some big shots landing. Takam, this is what he does best. He mixes fire with fire. He never backs down. Sometimes it has been his downfall, but it always makes for great action. Now actually pushing Bacoli back. But Bacoli landed some huge shots. He really did. They were coming in from all directions. And another nice left from Takam. Happy 
happy just to sit on the ropes, Bacoli. Well, both of these have suffered in terms of inactivity in recent years. Takam has fought only three times in the past three years. Bacoli only once in each of the past four years, but they're getting to work early here. I don't think this is bad tactics from Takam, actually, Mike. Getting on the chest of Bacoli, nullifying the threat. We've seen a range. The, the dangerous out of the two, for me, looks Bacoli when it's at arm's length. So Takam trying to nullify that threat, get close, trying to land that overhand right. Needs to get a bit closer there, just allowing Bacoli to land shots. Oh, both exchanging right hands. Yeah, he's done the right thing here, Takam. Just pinning every time Bacoli tries to escape. He brings either the left foot across or the right across just to keep his man on the ropes. But Bacoli boxing nicely. Good variation. Lovely left uppercut. And this is a good spell from Bacoli as Takam tries to stay close. Half a minute to go in the third. It's a big shot for Bacoli. He's hurt Takam, but back comes Takam, firing again with the right hand. But Takam's legs are weakening, no doubt about it. Last few seconds of round number three. But Coley's let a lot of punches go in this round now. If Takam could possibly hold on. Too many hoops to the head, he needs to bring the uppercut through Bacoli. That's the shot that he needs to be throwing. Great round for Bacoli. In the chief support tonight, Fabio Wardley defending his British heavyweight title, making the first defence, the vacant Commonwealth title also at stake, and the man rising from the opposite stall will be David Adelaide. Both of them unbeaten, both of them with huge inside the distance records in terms of percentages of those wins. Yeah, I mean, it was a good round. Just as I was saying, Takam doing the right thing, getting close to Bacoli and nullifying the work. This is right at the start of the round. It was a very good start from Bacoli. Landing some big shots. Hooks raining in from all directions. And I was just saying at the end of the round there, just needs to bring the uppercut through. Just, look, it's okay head hunting if you're varying the shots to the head, but just a little too predictable with the hooks. Well, noticeably, Takan backs off at the beginning of this fourth round. He was hurt in that final minute of the third, and Bacoli onto the front foot, looking to seize his opportunity. It was a blistering start to the third round from Bacoli. He doesn't look right, Takan. He's still hurt from that third round. The legs look unsteady. The legs have gone again from Takan. Backs off into his own corner. Yeah, I'll be surprised if we see more of this. Mike, this is good stuff from Bacoli. He's patient, but he's walking down Takam. He's walking continuously to his left. He just backs off Bacoli, but he's walking to his left Takam. He's walking onto that right hand. That's better movement. But even as Takam moved away from attempting that right hand of his own, he looked to be still on unsteady legs yeah he's landed some big right hands as well mike as you say and they've not troubled Bacoli at all he's just plowing forward these aren't good signs for takam very positive signs for Bacoli. Bacoli using the left jab as a measuring stick Heavy shots, really heavy shots. Talking to Takam, 300 pounds worth of power behind those shots. He's doing the right thing, Takam, Mike, moving, staying out of trouble. No need to exchange with the man who's just stalking his prey at the minute. Move, regroup, recover. How much energy is left? in those legs at 42. Oh, tremendous left hand to the body there by Bacoli. And Takam noticeably doubled over. Oh, and again, beautiful shot. 
Still 45 seconds to go in the round, and this is a big attack. And the referee decides that Takam has taken enough. Inside the last 40 seconds or so of the fourth round, and Martin into the fourth produces an impressive victory. And that is the earliest stoppage ever sustained by Carlos Takan. Martin Bacoli makes it 20 wins in 21 fights. Look, some are going to argue that that was a, a quick stoppage from the referee to jump in, but the signs weren't great for Takam. He'd landed some two big shots first offensively, and they didn't trouble Bacoli at all, who was walking down his man, stalking his prey, landing some big shots, and as you pointed out there, there was some lovely lefts to the body, really buckled the knees of Carlos Takam, who, for me, 